All right, Oval fans, this is my review, or as I decided to just start calling them last week, like highlights video where I talk about the things in the episode that are related to moving the plot along and whatnot. But I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think this episode was as bad as like the last three. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think Victoria was in it at all. And no, I'm not counting recaps or the end credit, uh, trailer for next week, but this was an okay episode. I didn't, you know, I did watch it at double speed. I only have about half a page of notes and I think maybe this is getting good since we're getting so damn close to the mid season. Well, actually, sorry, since we're getting so damn close to the season finale that it's all snap, but Part of me is like, well, the fact that it seems like everything is coming together so well means that everything is going to fall apart terribly by the time we get to the end of the season. So this was season three, episode 19, Gathering Evidence. I'm going to give it a five out of 10 just because I was like, mm, OK, this is all right. I mean, I did not watch the episode live. I literally just finished it watching it at double speed. I was done in like 20 minutes because, well, that's all I needed. Um, last night, obviously, my focus was mainly on um, Zatima and the fact that the episode summaries for all 10 episodes are on IMDb. And I did a video, it's already up on the channel. Uh, what's it called? Tyler Perry's Zatima Season 1 Synopsis Breakdown. Check that video out. And yeah, so really, we pick up where we left off. It turns out Kareem is, you know, he's in one piece, but you could tell that his you know mental psyche is like shook we don't know what happened to him but whatever happened to him probably left him broken because you know let, let me just take a shower let me just he he's acting exactly like he found you know sharon when she got abducted the first time he doesn't want to answer any questions i mean it's not funny but it's funny no pun intended that He's literally doing exactly what Sharon was whenever Kareem's like, Sharon, what happened to you? What, what, where'd you go? What? No, I don't want to talk about it. Nothing happened. That's exactly what Kareem was doing. So, you know, the first 10 minutes, Barry's an ass because he finds out Sharon was trying to talk to Kareem and Richard comes in there and throws him out. I'm not going to break it down. It's like, you know, it's funny to me how Richard was like, you go on somewhere and, and come back when you learn how to apologize. No more disrespect, boy. Barry should have went like, fine, I'm going, to, I'm going to go over to Malik's house. He doesn't treat his guests this way. If you watch the game, then you know Vaughn plays Jameson, who is on the game. It's, it was funny to me in my head. Anyway, um, so Sharon is like, oh, man, this is all my fault. No, it's not really. No, I mean, this Barry being an asshole. It's like he's literally acting like Priscilla and that he's letting his personal vendetta towards another person, in this case, Kareem cloud his judgment because there's a lot going on that's a lot bigger than Sharon talking to Kareem and you know disrespecting my house Barry this is your parents house you don't pay rent or nothing I can understand though because this is one of those things that should have been brought up a while ago Sharon like flip-flopping back between Richard and Nancy's house and Kareem's apartment it's like if I were Nancy and Richard it's like Sharon, we like you, but you're not going to like disrespect our son that way. The way you just come and no, no. But in any case, um, yeah, let me just try to talk about the related scenes all together. So Richard goes over to Kareem's apartment to offer help. You know, their strength in numbers. Kareem, I know you didn't just go for a walk. You and Dale need to come over to my place. You know, Sharon's there too. We need to stick together. Kareem is respectful as possible at first, but then it gets to the point where usually I'm like, oh, this asshole, but I can actually understand in a way. But then again, this is stupid because anytime Kareem thinks he knows best, it ends up blowing up in his face. Given the fact that he only sees Richard as a butler is kind of dumb because you didn't even believe Sharon and Dale's story about the chief of staff and the president and secret service. You decide to go to the police after they told you not to, and look what happened to you. Something that the audience doesn't even know. Now you have somebody from the White House who's trying to help you, and you decide, screw you know what, screw you and your help. I mean, I did like his two points of, one, I'm not going over there with your crazy ass son. That's a very legitimate point. And two, 
there's no way you can help me. So whatever happens to Kareem happens to Kareem. So Richard and Dale go back to uh, his house and on their way back, you know, Nancy has a talk with uh, Sharon basically saying I got bits and pieces together and Sharon, you know, well, part of me is like, oh, there you go telling people again. But on the other side, Nancy did kind of like hint that, well, I kind of know what's going on. Well, yeah, here's what happened with the president. Wait, the president. Yeah, he took me. He took you. Yeah. And he offered me. Did he offer you that? I don't want to know. Well, Miss Nancy, you just said. Yeah, Nancy shouldn't have said nothing. But now Sharon's all damn because now, wait, I'm in danger? And it's like, Lord, is she going to need her inhaler? This is not the time, Nancy. So um, Richard, before he and Dale get into the house, Sam calls his phone basically saying that, hey, you know, Vice President, I need you and Priscilla to come over. We need to go over all this evidence to bring these people down. So Richard's like, fine, I'll call Priscilla so we can get things going. So they go in the house. Nancy meets Dale's. Like, oh, yeah, I met you at the hospital. And then Nancy talks to Richard about the Sharon situation. And Richard's about to like, let me go talk to this girl. No, 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 no. I just need to know are we in danger? Because I can I can understand Nancy's point. I mean, I understand she has a bad heart and everything. And the less people know, the better. But when you have more guests coming into the house, that's literally putting a target on your home. You need to know, because like she said, Richard, what if something happens when you're at work? That's a very legitimate question. Usually I'm like, Nancy, come on. But Nancy's, Nancy and Kareem, I understand their positions in the episode. I'm not going to lie. I really do. But from there, um, Nancy calls Priscilla just to kind of let her know what's going on. And she's like, Sam and Rich's like, look, this is not the time. We, you and me, we meet with the vice president. We're going to bring these people down. Okay, let's do it. So she gets off the phone and calls Alonzo. And at first I'm like, oh shit, here we go with her doing some solo stuff. But no, this is actually related to, I believe the Gene situation where Alonzo had information from the cameras where, you know, Gene checked in, but she never left. It's old doctor footage of her leaving down from the residency. So that's going to be utilized in order to, you know, use that as a um, strike against the administration. And of course he wants to tell Sam because that's his boss because it's like, look, I don't want to talk to you about this kind of stuff without Sam knowing because it looks kind of shady. But Priscilla's like, come on now. It's like, there's a lot for me to lose. There's a lot for you to gain if you can help me take down these people. Okay, fine. So Alonzo decides to help out. Grip is off by the sidelines as Alan leaves for the night and Alonzo's like, look, I'm going to come over after I get off in a bit. And then, you know, Sam comes in Everything's good, but of course, Grip calls Donald to let him know that Sam's there. That goes back to an earlier plot point, which I will talk about right now. So, over at the vice president's house, you got the vice president, Simone, Bobby, Max, and Sam. They go over all the evidence, you know, in regards to what went down with Denise, because Max went to pick her up a few times from the uh, boutique. He saw when the first lady and her, you know, had a physical altercation back in season one. That feels like an eternity ago, right? Because this is 2022. By the time we get to fall, a.k.a. probably like the Oval season four part B or something, it'll be three years since the show's been on the air. Wow. OK. But in any case, you know how Max is connected with the Denise stuff and Bobby with Lily. The fact that, you know, Kyle and Donald are in a relationship or an affair He's messing around with uh, Lily. Sam, you know, it's funny because he didn't mention it at first, but uh, Vice President's like, well, hey, Martin, before he vanished, told me about how you got involved with the First Lady. And this fool sit up here like Jada <laughs> Jada, and says, yes, um, so, um, the First Lady and I were in an entanglement. <laughs> and then Bobby, was like, Bobby looked over at Max. They were like, did he just say entanglement? When I tell you, I almost lost my shit. That was hilarious. But in any case, um, you know, they go over the Gene situation, all the various affairs, uh, and the list goes on. So from there, he brings up, you know, Richard and Priscilla and how they have information that's vital to the situation as well. The fact that the first son admitted to the murders and this and that. So before Sam gets up to leave, you know, it's agreed that everybody's going to meet up here tonight to go over all the info. Of course, you know, Sam, uh, Max wants to go with Sam, which... Based on the ending, that would have been a good move, but maybe Bobby should have been the one to go because we know how trigger happy Max is when it comes to Kyle. But in, um, you know, as soon as Sam leaves, Simone and Vice President are like, "Can Sam be trusted? Is he compromised? Look, we're not sure, but dang it, he's like the best link we got right now." So, going over to the White House, 
you have a conversation between Grip and Donald, you know, basically about Kyle's whereabouts, the fact that Sam may or may not, but there's a good chance he's working with the vice president. And Donald's like, you know what? Give him a gun. Give uh, Kyle a gun. And Grip's like, oh, sir, I gave him two. Well, all I want you to do is sit back, let me know when Sam gets here, and that's it. You've done a great job. We're going to let Sam walk into his own death. So from there, uh, Donald goes to the Oval to talk with the president. He basically um, learns that Hunter is about to go over to the hospital to see Jason, and Donald's like, look, sir, I know uh, this might not be the right time, but your son is troubled, so what's the plan when he comes out of his, you know, unconscious state because doctor's saying he's getting better? He might be, you know, a detriment to the cover-ups. And Hunter's like, oh, no, well, you know, he's scrambling the brain and whatnot. There's nothing to worry about. But, you know, my wife, she doesn't have a plan. And Donald lied saying that, um, if I'm not mistaken, they did talk about it. It's like, there's, yeah, yeah, because Hunter asked, did you talk with Victoria? No, sir. Yes, you did. But, yeah, uh, Hunter is not worried as always. He wants to get there, you know, before the night shift. Or the shift change with the nurses because he's Hunter, of course. But Donald lets him know about the plan. And this is probably one of the highlights of the episode because Hunter, you know, learns of Sam's betrayal. He wants him fired right then and there. But Donald's like, no, 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 no. Ambush, sir. Kyle's locked in a bunker with a password that changes every 15 minutes. So what we're going to do, um, he already has a couple of guns. We're going to let Sam walk his little short ass down there. And go from there. Ambush. I like the way you think, Donald. I don't know why, but I think this was a good scene just because usually Donald gives right it, you know, the right advice and Hunter doesn't want to hear it. But the fact that Hunter's like, you know what? You know what? I'm going to let you have this one, Donald. Let me go check out the asses of these nurses. Good job. So the last thing to talk about is the fact that Sam walks down there, you know, brown paper bag, uh, Kyle's food. You know, he's like in a meditative pose or something like that. And the conversation goes as usual. Sam, are we still on that? I'm not telling you anything, but he just, you know, makes it known that I'm going to wipe you and your wife off the face of the earth. You know, I'm gay, but I'm going to rape your wife anyway. And then Sam's like, you better watch it. But we have some interesting dialogue here, such as Sam saying, you were a soldier, right? Well, yeah, I was to open my eyes and learn that this country doesn't give a damn about the soldiers and the people that fight for them. So I'm just trying to get what's mine. And to be honest, that is an interesting perspective to have because you know, at the end of the day, you got to look out for number one, and that's yourself. That's not to say you can't care about other people, but in the grand scheme of things, you got to look at it like life doesn't owe you anything. It doesn't matter how hard you fight to protect this, protect that. You know, hey, it is what it is. And I did like, that was like a little nice character moment. And that's another reason why I really liked the episode. It gave us a little taste of something different as opposed to the same rinse and repeat dialogue we always get. So from there, um, he doesn't want his food tossed to him like an animal. He wants uh, Sam to reach in with the bag. But when he does so, he grabs Sam, you know, jerks him closer to the uh, cell, and then puts a gun to his head. So the preview is like Sam breaks away and posts, you know, posts his gun up. Oh, we got a standoff, boy. Okay, damn, that's good. So, yeah, this episode was decent. You know, I didn't hate it. I thought it was okay. But, uh, yeah, still a 5 out of 10. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you think things are going to unfold? Um, it's not going to work. Seriously, there, there's going to be a season five. There's no way in hell this is going to work. But, you know, I think because it's two seasons in a row where we're around the end point of the season, everybody gathers their clues together. I mean, hell, um, you even got like Sharon and Dale and all this information they have with them from being abducted and uh, it's funny because Max, I believe, on the couch he was sitting on with Bobby and Sam, he's the only one who hasn't been in a sexual situation with any of the administration, which I thought was funny. But yeah, this is an okay episode. 5 out of 10. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Um, hit the thumbs up button to show you liked the video. Hit subscribe and hit the bell icon to select all. That way you don't miss out whenever I post content on the channel. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description. And with that being said, I'll catch you in the next episode.